combos. Oh, oh. Really? Sucio. Why must Sucio. you do that? Oh, what? No, you, <laughs> you, you will not comprehend. <laughs> This match changed the future of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 forever. Marlon Pie is one of the best execution players in the world and consistently connects combos that many consider to be too hard for tournament play. Today he is going to show the world the fabled Tac Infinite is viable in tournament play, opening the door to many new teams and forcing every top player to adopt it in the future. To explain why this mechanic is so impactful, we have to discuss a few mechanics and how they work in UMBC3. In Marvel, every hit provides a certain amount of hit stun. As combos go on, there is less and less time to combo into the next move, until eventually the opponent is no longer in hit stun and can recover. Each move in a combo also changes how much hit stun decay is left. For example, comboing multiple light attacks together makes it so your opponent can recover much faster than multiple heavy hits. TAC, or TAC, is short for Team Aerial Combo. Team Aerial Combos are a mechanic built into the game. At any time while you are comboing an opponent in the air, you can select one of three directions, up, down or side, and press the S button to attempt the attack combo. If successful, your next character will come in and you can continue to combo. The trick though, is that your opponent can do the same thing while being comboed. If they select the same direction as you, the combo will break and everyone will get reset to neutral. Each direction also has a unique property. Down gives you a full bar of super meter, side takes away a full bar from your opponent's super meter, and up gives you more damage for that combo. TACs create a unique situation with hit stun decay. Normally, as you do a combo, your hit stun decay goes along and your opponent will eventually pop out. When you go into a TAC, the hit stun decay is fully ignored until one of the characters touch the ground and enters a neutral state. Previously, this allowed some extremely long and interesting sequences, like this infamous Marlon Pike clip against PR Balrog. Wow, great confirmed. Standing medium call doom plasma beam, canceled into paper. And side exchange. Wow, in the middle of the screen like that, huh? Oh! What? What? Oh! What? 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 Oh what? my god! The what? crowd is going nuts! What? Pack Infinites abuse this by cutting the final hit before you land short. If cut short enough, the game thinks you are still in the jump state and lets you jump back up and continue the combo. If you're able to repeatedly enter this jump state as you land, then you can continue the combo forever. Attack Infinite is so strong because any character has the potential to touch of death as long as they have the correct character in the second slot. Not only do you kill your opponent's character, but you build a massive amount of super meter with it. This allowed certain teams to become much stronger. For example, teams with Nova, who has one of the best grabs in the game, can now reliably kill off any grab that Nova gets. Before, it would require a lot of meter or specific setups to do any sort of damage. Chris G's famous team of Morgan Doom Virgil now had a reliable way to gain the meter it needed for its super bar heavy playstyle. It also allowed touch of deaths off stray hits and for Morgan to set up her fireball game again. Now, any character that had issues doing damage could potentially touch of death any character in the game. The only true counterplay to this was to guess correctly on the tech. In a raw guessing game, you only had a 33% chance of stopping it, but in reality, it was actually a mind game that players were becoming extremely good at. With all these benefits, why was no one really using it? At the time, it was very difficult to set up. One of the first Tac Infinites found was with Sentinel. Even though it was an easy setup, there were some major issues. Sentinel isn't used as much as other characters, it had to be a down tack so your opponent could counter it very easily, and it had to be done in the corner. Even with all these possible issues, Jam was able to land the first Tac Infinite in bracket at EVO 2012. Overall, does not have a lot of health. Oh, here we go! Here we go! Is he doing it? Anthony! Oh, Jan Geef, baby! Yo, Jan Geef! Somebody just lost Yo. the money. Yo, where, where's Natsuma? Get me a patch! Oh, patch this! Jan Geef, patch man. this game! A few players and lab scientists set out to make something for one of the most popular characters in the game, Dr. Doom. Where we find ourselves again with Marlon Pie. As we saw earlier, Marlon Pie was already pushing the Doom Tac combo meta and just needed to find the ending. After a while, they stumbled onto a flight setup, utilizing the fabled Butter Beam and Light Punch. This was the final key needed to fully unlock the Doom Tac infinite, as it allowed a consistent way to land the shortened Light Punch. It is now December 2012. We are in Philadelphia for Northeast Championships 13. Top 8 has just begun and Marlon Pie is facing off against Disgruntled Goa. 
Marlon Pai is one game away from losing and needs to pull something out to stop Goa's momentum. He's able to get a grab on Goa and immediately up tacks. Without Tack Infinite, this would do maybe 30% and use a super meter. But Marlon Pai pulled out the secret weapon. Style, man. The way that the matchups go, the way that these matches are played stylistically, sometimes one guy can just give one somebody a problem. Well, what's that? That's what I think he wanted. Ooh. And you know what Merlin says? Get out of my game! He lands a full attack infinite to eliminate Goa's first character. But Marlin Pai isn't done yet. He grabs Goa again and does a down tack into another tack infinite. The crowd erupts. Time for the swag. TAC down. Oh, oh no. Oh. Again? I got another one. Again? I got another one. Are we going to watch it again? I got another one, Are we going to watch it again? Show me what you got. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I you mad because so I'm styling on you. Marlon Pie, the, the most oh. graceful, elegant, stylish player in the game today. Uh. Little do they know. This match was the beginning of a new meta in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Sadly, Marlon Pai loses the set, but did more for the game than winning this tournament ever would. The landscape changed drastically in the next few years of Marvel's life. When characters that had trouble killing off a single touch were now starting to see more play, grabs became extremely effective because even with the immense damage scaling, they can now kill. Characters like Phoenix and Morgan became much stronger as Tack Minutes built a large amount of super meter. As more setups got figured out, more of the cast became viable as the second character on a team. While controversial at the time, it ended up making some very interesting teams viable. It was time for a new era. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below and check out the match Time Forgot, KBR vs. Fublot. Let me know below what other matches you want to see. Until next time.